Our next bit of content is on maximum and minimums, which are the turning points of functions. So if we look at this diagram here, it's just a bit of theory for this first page. So we have this graph that is restricted by the domain from negative five to six. Now we've got with our maximums and minimums, we have global maximums and minimums and we have local maximum and minimums. The local are sometimes called relative as well. So if we look at point A, this is a global minimum because it is the lowest possible y value out of the whole entire graph. B is a local maximum because it is a maximum turning point. C is a local minimum because it is a minimum turning point. And D is a global maximum because it is the largest, it has the largest y value out of the whole graph. So we also ha can sometimes have stationary points of inflection. So it's not always true when we find the derivative of a function and make it equal zero to find the turning point, it may not actually always be a maximum or a minimum at that point. So if you look at this graph here on the um, right, this point right in the center at the origin is still stationary. The, grad the gradient there is zero, but it's not creating a maximum or a minimum. So we call a point like this a stationary inflection point and it describes as a curve changes. So the nice lovely little table here just explaining some things. So if you have a stationary point where the derivative equals zero and it can be a maximum, a minimum or a stationary inflection point. It's just got the sign diagrams there for each of those and what it might look like on a graph. Now to find if things are a maximum or a minimum, there are two tests. You either got the first derivative test or the second derivative test. So the first derivative test is pretty much exactly what we did in the last lesson with finding the increasing or decreasing. So you find the derivative of the function, find where it equals zero, create a sign diagram to find out if it's a maximum or a minimum. The second derivative test, you find the derivative of the function and find where it equals zero. Then from there, we find the second derivative. Then we sub our turning points that we found in step two into the second derivative. If the answer to that is less than zero, it's a maximum. If it's greater than zero, it's a minimum. I'm going to do this example here. So for part A, when it says find and classify the nature of any turning points, I'm going to do this one with the first derivative test and the second derivative test. You don't need to do both in a question. You can then choose which one you would prefer to work with. Then part B, we want to state the intervals for which the function is increasing or decreasing. And then we're going to find any local or global extrema, which basically means our local and global maximum minimum points. Now this function we're looking at is 4 minus 3x squared plus x to the power of 3. And we're only looking at the graph between negative 2 and 3. So that will come into play mainly for part C. So let's start looking at this. So part A, we want to find out if we have any maximums or minimums and where they are. So the first thing we need to do when we do this is find our derivative of our function. So our function is four minus three X squared plus X cubed. So first thing we're gonna do is find the derivative of that and you have to do that for the first and second derivative tests, which will give us minus six X plus three X squared. Next step, make that equal zero, and we're going to find out where those stationary points are. So if we solve this by factorizing, pull out what's common between the two, we'll have 3x, and then we will get negative 2 plus x in the brackets. Now from here, for this to equal zero, either... 3x equals 0 or minus 2 plus x equals 0. And which, if we rearrange both of these, we'll get x equals 0 or x equals 2. So they are our two stationary points. And now we need to find out if they are maximums or minimums. Now, this is where doing the first derivative test and the second derivative test will change what we do. So if we are going to do the first derivative test, I'm going to go up here for that. Once we've got to this point, we draw our nice little number line. We put our two points on it, 0 and 2. And then we find out 
where the function is positive and negative. So if we pick a value between 0 and 2 for the middle, let's go with 1, put that into our derivative function, we will get an answer of negative 3, so the function is negative in the middle. Pick a number below 0, so let's go with negative 1, put that into the derivative function, we'll get an answer of 9, which is positive, and same with a number bigger than 2, so let's go with 3, which also equals 9, so that is positive. Now looking at that, it means 0 is going to be a maximum, because the function is increasing, it's getting to 0, which is where it's a negative gradient, and then it is decreasing after that, so it's a maximum. And then if we look at at 2, it is decreasing as it goes down to 2, it's 0 at 2, and then it starts increasing, so it is a minimum. So we have a max at x equals 0 and a minimum at x equals 2. Now from here, it's always a good idea to find the coordinates of those points. So we want to put those values back into our original function. And f at 0 will give us 4. So the coordinate of our maximum is at 0, 4. And we do the same with the 2 back into our original and we get a value of 0 for that. So our minimum is at 2, 0. Okay, so that is the first derivative test. So if we're doing the second derivative test, I'm just going to come over here and put a 2. Okay, once we've found these two turning points, we then need to find the second derivative which will give us negative 6 plus 6x. Now, once we've done that, we've put the two values that we found above, where our stationary points are, into the second derivative. So, the second derivative at 0, which gives us an answer of negative 6, and we do the second derivative at 2, which will give us an answer of positive 6. Now, with the second derivative, as negative 6 is less than 0, this is a maximum. And then, because the second derivative of 2 is greater than 0, that creates, gives us a minimum. And then from there, we just go back up to this step here and work out the coordinates of the points. And that is a second derivative test. So you can use either of those for finding if something is a maximum or a minimum. For part B, we have state the intervals for which the function is increasing or decreasing. So if we go up to that first derivative and look at the sign diagram there, we know it's increasing when it is less than 0 and greater than 2. Now, the part we have to be aware of here is in the question, we are only looking at the domain of this graph from negative 2 to 3. So we have to bear that in mind when we are stating if the function is increasing or decreasing. So if this function is increasing, if we look at that side di sign diagram in purple, when it is less than 0. Now, our lowest value is negative 2, so this function is increasing from negative 2 and it includes negative 2, all the way up to 0. And it is also increasing when it is greater than 2, and the highest value of this function, as told in the question, is 3. So then from 2 to 3, it is increasing. Now just a quick reminder there with our brackets, square brackets are including, curved brackets are not including. So the, so the 0 and 2 there are not including because they are the stationary points, so at that point the gradient is 0. And now for decreasing, where is the sign diagram negative? It is negative between 0 and 2. So that's the interval which the function is decreasing. And that's part B. So part C, we want to state if the points in A are local or global extrema. So with part C, we have already found two maximum and minimum points, all right, and they are the local or relative ones because they're turning points. 
But now we need to find out, are they the actual global maximum and global minimum for this function? So are they the biggest or smallest possible values? Now to do that, what we do is we look at the smallest value in our, of our domain. So just look at part B, so the negative two and the three. To work out our global, we also need to include those two and find out what the y values are at those values. So we always look at the smallest value of our whole possible function, which is negative two. We want to look at any turning points, which were zero and two. Then we want to look at the largest possible x value in the function, which is three. Now we put all those four values into our original function and you'll find that this one equals negative 16. We have already worked out this one is four, this one is zero, and if you work out the function of three, you will also get four. Now from here, this can tell us which are global and local maximum and minimums. So the smallest possible value out of all of them is negative 16, which means this is a global minimum. Zero here, which is a minimum we found before, is only the local minimum. And then we have two fours here. So the three, the, F, the function of three at four, that will be a global maximum because it's the largest possible value across the function. And the four at this turning point is a local and global maximum. So when finding out if things are local or global maximums and minimums, put in your turning points along with the smallest domain and the largest domain value and then look at your answers and determine which are global and local. Now that's all I wanted to do on maximums and minimums. So now you can go back to your booklets and you are to do um, in booklet four, pages four to eight.